is because that is the first part that dries out. Our steam oven is going to cook much more evenly, so I don't need to worry about those, that dark meat getting done uh, after the white meat. Exactly. So with this, we're gonna ensure that we get a juicy, succulent white meat, as well as a delicious dark meat, okay? So probe is in. I have my rack set on the bottom placement, which is number one. If you look on the side, they are all numbered. That way, because our turkey is a little bit taller, we won't have any, actually I want it to go in this way, we won't have the top of the turkey hitting the ceiling, okay? And if you'll notice, it is important, I am not putting it in a preheated oven. This is not preheated, that's why this is so easy, okay? The side of your oven right here is where the probe will go. It has a little flap covering it, so a lot of people can't see it initially and they're like, where I don't have that place where I can stick the probe, that's where it goes, okay? It's also important that this part is fully inserted into the oven, or again, it will not read the temperature correctly, okay? So turkey's in, you guys can see, this is about an 18 pound turkey, so he's pretty big. We have done, and if we had everyone here, we would have done a larger turkey. We have done 24 pounds in this steam oven. It is bigger than you think. So if you are having a big crowd for Thanksgiving, yes, you can fit a 25 pound turkey in your steam oven. You just need it to be on that bottom rack. And a tip for you out there, if you are doing that large turkey, you may not be able to use the rack set in the roasting pan. You may just set it directly in the roasting pan to fit. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the mode. We are going to, and I think, is it zoomed in enough that everyone can see the mode? Perfect. So it's on, it's at that home screen, and I'm going to go to the convection steam mode. I'm gonna hit enter, and then you're gonna get this uh, screen that says use rack position two or one and three. You just have to hit enter. It's just telling you the rack positions you can use, okay? And then here I'm going to adjust set temperature, the internal temperature of the cavity. I'm actually going to set it to 350, because this turkey is under 20 pounds, I can go a little bit hotter. I would not go any higher than 350 here because you don't want the skin of your turkey to burn. We want beautiful golden brown. I'm gonna hit enter. And then this is where we set our internal probe. So you're gonna use the arrows. You're gonna go over one place where it says set food probe temp. You're gonna hit enter. Now we're gonna set the internal temperature of our turkey white meat and I'm gonna set that at 155, okay? Enter again, and then you can go ahead and hit start, and Thanksgiving is on its way. Okay, so I wanna check, are we clear so far on what we've done for the turkey and the mode? Okay, I see no questions, so we're gonna keep going. I am gonna talk quickly, again, I wanna talk about that mode, and then we can talk about what I did for the prep of the turkey. Convection steam. This is our combination mode. We are getting both the power of steam and high heat. So what that's going to give us is a beautiful, even cooking and crisping ability. Okay, this mode is what you want to use for anything that you want. Crispy or golden brown on the outside or the top while the inside stays nice and moist and juicy. That's what convection steam can do for you. Okay, we're gonna get high heat because you need that higher heat for browning purposes. But that steam, that intermittently throughout the cooking process, we're gonna get bursts of steam. That is going to help cook our food more evenly and going to help protect that food. So again, the white meat actually tastes good. We're usually, I'm like, ah, don't even bother me with white meat. Don't even give me the white on the turkey, just give me that turkey leg. I actually enjoy the white meat when it's cooked in the steam oven, okay? So that is convection steam. Other examples that you can use in the rest of your life, because we really only cook turkeys once a year, let's be honest. You can do roast chicken. You can do uh, mac and cheese with crispy topping. You can do any sort of uh, gratin with crispy topping, like a fennel leek gratin with breadcrumbs on top. That is delicious on the convection steam. Um, you can do, I do biscuits in there getting that beautiful golden brown top and the layers stay nice and flaky and tender. So those are again some examples. Just you wanna think of anything that you want 
crispy on the outside and moist and tender on the inside. That is convection steam. Okay, so we've got the mode. Now I'm gonna talk about the turkey. What we did for the turkey. And we are going to send everyone the recipes that I did for this class, as well as a couple other tips and tricks for your steam oven. So the turkey, what I like to do is a dry brine. We do not mess around with wet brine. That is just, nobody has the time for that. That is a headache and a nightmare. And the best part of the turkey is the crispy golden brown skin. If you've got a wet brine, it's kind of like wet is the enemy to crispy. So you're not gonna get that beautiful end result. So what I like to do is what we call a dry brine. So we take a lot of kosher salt and a little bit of brown sugar and rub the whole turkey all over, stick it on that rack, just like you guys saw, and put it in the fridge. Uncovered, leave it at least 24 hours, if not more, you could do up to three days. And what that's gonna do is it's going to help really penetrate through the meat so the actual turkey meat gets seasoned, not just skin. It's gonna flavor it all the way throughout. As the salt goes in, all of the water that's in the turkey starts to get pushed to the surface working through osmosis for those little scientists out there. And then because we've left it uncovered in the fridge, that moisture that's gonna start coming to the surface will evaporate and you'll end up with a drier skin and a more flavored meat. This is the best way to do your turkey, okay? So after that, what we did is we set it out. I like to let it sit out at least two hours to get to room temperature because it's going to cook much more evenly in your oven. And then we just rubbed it with a delicious roasted garlic aioli. We made that a little bit earlier as well by roasting the garlic head and then mixing it in with some mayonnaise and citrus zest and salt and pepper and you get this flavorful aromatic stuff to just smear all over the bird. So you can do a compound butter, but I have found that this aioli mixture will actually give you a slightly better flavor and a slightly better browning over the outside. So that is our turkey. I am all turkeyed out with the chalk, so I need to know any questions on the turkey. Are we all pretty good? It sounds like no questions on how to do your turkey. Okay, awesome, you guys. We can go ahead and move along. So next, the rolls. These are, for many people, the most important parts of Thanksgiving. And I want to show you guys what we have going here. So, Ab, if you want to go ahead and zoom, I think I'm, I might stand on this side because I want you guys to be able to see. It's hard to see. Okay, I'm going to open this because you got to see what's happening here. We've got cute little rolls, and they are proofed and beautiful. There it is. Look at those babies. Okay, so this, and this is not something I usually do, but we have found that people really appreciate when I showcase frozen bread dough, how you can do it at home and your rolls will be literally even better than Texas Roadhouse rolls, okay? You will love them. So what we did here, this is really neat. In my opinion, the top two important things that you can do in your steam oven are the rolls and the turkey, okay? If you're trying to figure out oven space, those are really elevated with the steam oven. and You can't really get the same result without. So. What we did this process, you know, I'll pull them out and show you. So we take our frozen Rhodes Rolls dough and we actually like to put two little balls in the little muffin tins. You get these little butt rolls, they're so cute. <laughs> Yay. Um, and then we sit them in our steam oven. We do not thaw them overnight or in the fridge. We actually put them directly in the steam oven and I'm gonna show you the mode we're gonna use, which is auto steam bake. Okay, so let's pretend they're frozen. We stick them in, make sure you uh, grease the pan so they don't stick and we're gonna go to I went a little too early it's been proofing so now I'm gonna show you how we got here okay so home screen we're gonna hit the more button from there you're gonna go to auto steam bake this is the bread mode you're gonna hit enter and you will literally see bread grated bread these are all your options puff pastry and proof proof is the rising portion of bread baking. So that's where the yeast really gets active and the rolls double in size. You see that a lot. You're gonna hit enter. And remember, the rolls are still frozen. We are hitting proof and then you are gonna start it. And that proof 
environment. It's a little bit wet and a li it's just warm. It's at 90 degrees and it's gonna be just kind of moist. That is going to thaw those rolls perfectly, like absolutely perfectly. Now, here's the really cool thing. So stick them in. It probably takes uh, 30, 45 minutes to thaw completely. And then we don't have to take them out, leave them in there. And what's gonna happen is exactly what I just showed you. You're gonna get that doubling in size. After it thaws, it just stays in that proof mode and those rolls will double in size. We are at the exact right timing to now bake these, okay? So you've seen them thawed, they've proofed, this is what they should look like by the time you're ready to bake. So here's the really cool thing. We don't have to take them out of the oven. They are still going to stay in your oven. You're going to stop the proofing. Should we stop? Yes. And now we're gonna go back to that auto steam bake, but we're just gonna bake them on the bread mode. So you're gonna hit enter. It is at 410 degrees. We're gonna turn that down a little bit. These rolls don't need to be quite that high. We're gonna go to 350 because it's gonna be convection. So it's gonna act a little bit hotter. So I've got it at 350. And again, I'm not actually gonna set a temperature or a timer. I'm just gonna start it, okay? So now that our rolls are in, oh, now it's zoomed up on me. Going back. Okay, we're done with that. So that is how you're going to do the process for your rolls. Now I'm going to talk to you about that auto steam bake mode, what's happening, what it's doing, and how you can use it besides Thanksgiving. So again, that is our bread mode. You can proof, like if you like to make cinnamon rolls, if you like to make sandwich bread, if you like to make sourdough bread, this is the best way to do it because this is like taking a bakery style oven and putting it in your home. This is where you're going to get that crispy, beautiful, shiny exterior where the inside stays really nice and moist, but also you get the full spring, that full rise of the bread. It's cooked all the way through. So what's happening here, the reason we don't preheat is because this mode is going to start with steam. And as it preheats, it's going to get up to, in this case, 350 degrees. As it preheats, that steam is going to start to evaporate. Once you get over 210, we're not gonna get any more steam in the cavity, now it's just gonna be that high heat. Well, that steam, what it has had the ability to do is kinda of come in and create this gummy layer on the surface of the dough, which you guys can totally imagine. And that gummy layer is gonna do two things. It's going to protect the interior of the bread so that it doesn't cook too fast, so that it has the ability to get the full rise. And it's also gonna create that shinier, really crispy crust on the surface of the bread as well. So you get truly bakery quality bread in your own home. So yes, I didn't set a timer, but that's because frozen rolls, I mean, they're so forgiving. I'm just gonna watch this and we'll watch. And as soon as it gets to that golden brown that I like, then we'll pull them out. Super simple. And then we're gonna brush them with a little bit of butter and top them with a little flaky salt and they'll be ready to serve with dinner, okay? So that is auto steam bake. Other things you can do besides breads, as we've said, that puff pastry does a fabulous job. If anyone uses puff pastry, wants to make croissants or make little tarts, oh my gosh, that's the best way to do puff pastry. Don't cook your puff pastry any other way. And again, you don't need to preheat, which seems counterintuitive for anyone who's baked or cooked for a long time. But this mode needs that time to preheat to give you that beautiful end product. Okay, any questions again? We're checking, I think everyone's still pretty clear. We can keep rolling along. Okay, so while we've got these going, and I have got to tell you, this turkey's already starting to smell beautiful and you're getting all those herbs and that roasted garlic smell. I'm very excited. Um, you can also notice, for those who are worried about their turkey, you will see, I didn't mention before, but this is gonna cook in like half the time, a quarter of the time, like really, really, really fast. So already you will get a little icon at the top is gonna tell you what temperature your food is at continually. So the inside of our turkey is at 54 degrees right now. We've got about 100 degrees to go and it'll happen probably within the next hour. So it's nice and quick. All right, so sorry, I had to talk about my turkey one more time and our rolls. 
we're going to move along now to my one of my other favorite parts about thanksgiving and that is the dressing i say dressing because i do not believe in stuffing the bird i have a lot of opinions about this i think the best part of stuffing stuffing which now it's dressing because it's not inside but is the browned crispy caramelized topping so all of this if this goes inside your bird it's going to get those turkey juices but number one it's going to be soggy it's never going to get golden brown and crispy and number two that stuffing that dress or yeah stuffing when it's in the bird that is what takes the longest to come up to safe temperatures so if you put the stuffing inside your bird you have to probe the stuffing and that's going to take longer to get to 160 degrees than the actual white meat so what you'll end up with is overcooked turkey and soggy stuffing trust me that's not the way what we're doing here is we are doing the turkey and the dressing separate so we're gonna get crispy and we're gonna get a moist turkey perfectly cooked so what I've done here is a mixture of cornbread and sourdough and we just kind of like pulled bread apart so you get irregular craggy bits and then we toast those in the oven so they dry out and while those are toasting we have a mixture of um, Italian sausage that we get nice and crispy and then we saute red onions and celery and apples and uh, we add a little bit of nutmeg toss that all with the bread mixture add some herbs some sage and thyme because Thanksgiving, what is Thanksgiving without sage? Sage is in everything, so take advantage. Toss that all together, and then we've got it in our 13 by nine. The recipe that I'll send you guys is enough for a 13 by nine and an eight by eight dish, which, I mean, depends how much stuffing you eat, but that should be enough for about eight to 10 people. And then, or eight to 12 people, yeah, it really depends how much you eat. And then we, um, I just do a mixture of chicken stock and some eggs kind of hold it all together and the key is not going too soggy but not under sogging it okay so there is a happy medium and that's what we've done here so you want them to soak up that sort of chicken stock custard mixture and then we can bake this and they will be crispy while also staying nice and um, moist similar this is kind of like a bread pudding without all the dairy that's basically what you're going for here okay so that's all we're doing now the second key to a good stuffing is cooking it and i will say in the steam oven the mode that we're going to use the end product is like far superior so we're out of steam ovens behind me as you can see so i'm actually going to give this to yvonne and she's going to go cook this in one of our other millions of steam ovens around the shell room thank you and i'll tell you how we're going to cook it so what you want to cook your stuffing on is convection humid now this mode unlike convection steam and auto steam bake this mode is not going to inject any steam into the cavity this mode is going to close off the vent that's in the top of the oven which is then going to trap all of the moisture that the food will release as it cooks so it's going to create a humid environment that humid environment is the perfect way to get a to cook through batters or bread puddings slash stuffings dressings or even braise your meats so again think about it this way we're not injecting steam we're going to use the moisture that's already found in the food so it's going to prevent that food from drying out and then it's also because we can turn up the temperature we're baking our stuffing i think at i don't know 350 something like that and so we're still going to get a browning on the top while keeping that moisture so again stuffing bread pudding the perfect time to use it but also cakes and brownies and muffins and all of those batter type foods that really really benefit from moisture and by not being dried out convection humid is the perfect way to bake those you're just going to want to drop the temperature 25 degrees than what you would usually do and you need to be prepared that it's going to probably finish up a lot faster than what you're used to like it might be done 25 percent sooner than what you previously are used to baking it at and then the last thing that that convection humid really really shines at is braising quote unquote 
because like we said, it closes off the vent, which traps the moisture. And it's the exact same thing as taking a Dutch oven or a Le Creuset pan and putting the lid on and cooking it low and slow. It's the exact same thing. The vent closing is just like lid on. So you can do those uh, Sunday roasts, that sort of chuck roast. You can do pork ribs. You can do uh, pork butts. You can do lamb shoulder. You can do any of those foods that you really want to cook low and slow, those fattier cuts of meat that need time to really break down the fat and cartilage and connective tissue to end up with a perfect, unctuous and tender product. So that's what's happening in convection human. So now we're doing stuffing on it, but I've kind of walked through other things you can cook with that convection humid. Still no questions it looks like, so we'll keep rolling right along. Feel free to ask questions, guys. Don't be afraid, okay? So the next mode we're gonna talk about is the convection mode. The regular old convection mode. So the really cool thing about the steam oven, and if you came into our showroom before you purchased the steam oven or got your appliances, then you probably heard us talk about this steam oven is the best way to go because you get all of these combination modes, you get a steaming effect, but you also can treat it like a regular oven. So that's what we're doing right now is I am roasting up one of my favorite vegetables, Brussels sprouts, which I know used to get such a bad rap, but in today's world, Brussels sprouts are delicious. I'm gonna tell you right now. Crispy, golden brown, caramelized, that's the way to eat a Brussels sprout. Steamed, boiled, no, not a way to eat a Brussels sprout, that's when they take the parts. This is how you get delicious Brussels sprouts, okay? So what we're doing, we are tossing the Brussels sprouts, sliced in half lengthwise, and I think you can see it, but I'm gonna hold one up so you can really see how we've cut it there. So you can see it's been sliced in half lengthwise. You got a nice flat surface for browning. And then we've got them just tossed with olive oil and salt. Hopefully you guys saw how much salt I used because yes, that's important. You want to make sure these are fully seasoned. Now, I am gonna show you, this is a regular sheet pan. You guys all have these regular size half sheet pans. You can get them from Costco. That's really where we get ours and we can fit this in the steam oven. So you're then just gonna go ahead and dump your Brussels all over, oh, I guess I can give you this whole thing, all over our sheet pan. Thank you. And I am gonna go ahead and take the time and effort of flipping over all the Brussels sprouts so that that flat side is in contact with the pan. Because like I said, a good Brussels sprout means crispy and caramelized, and this is gonna give us the best crisping, caramelizing availability, okay? So now we've got them all flipped over, they're salted, they're oiled. We do one of the few times that we are going to preheat our oven. And with these, you're just gonna cook them on regular convection. Again, that is a dry heat, it's moving air, that fan in the back is gonna be on, so it's going to be cooking them and it's going to cook them a little bit hotter and faster. So I'm gonna give these to Yvonne, both our ovens over here are full, and we're just gonna put this in our preheated oven, again, in one of our other kitchens, and they're gonna get roasty toasty. Now, just so you know, I'll hand these off, thank you. And then just so you know how we're gonna finish those, we are going to toss them with a little balsamic glaze and then let them finish for like five more minutes in the oven so they get super caramelized and crispy. And then we toss them with some Parmigiano Reggiano and some pine nuts and they are so tasty. That's how we're gonna eat our Brussels sprouts. But I just wanted to show you guys, we are cooking them on convection. There are two rules to convection that are important. We, and I should preface, every single steam oven mode, except the steam mode and the reheat mode, are convection modes. So yes, we talked convection steam, convection humid. Now we're talking convection. All of those modes need to have the same rule applied down 25 degrees from what you're used to and check them 25% sooner because that moving hot air is actually going to cook the food quicker. It penetrates through that surface of the food and gets to the center a lot more effectively than just still air. The same way that in Chicago, 30 degrees feels like negative 30 degrees. That same idea, that moving air really penetrates through your skin, really penetrates through the food. So rule to remember for convection, all convection modes, 
25, 25. Drop the temperature 25 degrees from what your recipe says or what you're used to and start checking it 25% sooner. Okay, that is the convection mode. Bake your cookies on it, roast your vegetables on it. It does anything and everything your regular full-size convection ovens will do. It just preheats a lot faster because it's such a small cavity and that regular size sheet pan fits right in. You just wanna fit that in between the racks, not in the racks. So in between three and four, you slide the rack in. In between two and one, the rack slides right in. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. If you have questions on fitting the trays in, sometimes we have people who can't quite understand because that's not super clear. If you saw it in person, it makes sense. Just let us know if that's not clear. And the cool thing is, all of you guys are at home, so you can test it out right now and make sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. So do that so you can ask us the questions before we get off. All right, I'm checking on my beautiful rolls. I mean, you guys are gonna die. They look so incredible. They're already starting to get a nice little golden brown color on them. And our turkey is at, let's see, I'm still not gonna set a timer. We'll let that go. Our turkey is at 75 degrees and he smells fabulous. All right, so everyone's still clear as mud. No questions regarding any of the modes so far. We can move along to our steam mode, okay? So we're gonna talk the steam mode and we're gonna do a couple things on this mode. So what I've got here, this is like hard because I wanna show you. Can, can the camera like go down? I don't wanna turn this too much, but I want you guys to see we've got a pumpkin custard mixture here. Okay, I don't, I'm about to tip it all the way out. Okay, you guys can kind of see that custard mixture. So what this is, is a pumpkin maple peau de creme. I wanna ask, does anyone know what a peau de creme is? But none of you guys are here. So I'll just tell you, a peau de creme is basically like the creme brulee without the brulee, without that sugary crust. It is the baked custard portion of the creme brulee. So we've got a beautiful custard mixture here of pumpkin and maple syrup and those pumpkin pie spices. So it's basically, we're gonna have like the most creamy, rich, tender pumpkin pie. What we've got, when I say pumpkin pie spice, I don't like to actually buy the pumpkin pie spice because surprise, surprise, I like to be in control of those spices. So I use cinnamon, ginger, cloves, and nutmeg. Those are your four pumpkin pie spices, but if you just buy them separately, you can add the exact amount that you want. I like a little more cinnamon and a little more nutmeg, and I like a little less of the cloves because cloves can be super strong. So I add those spices, I add some salt, and then it's got uh, some cream and milk with the pumpkin mixture, and egg yolks. So the egg yolks, just like creme brulee, that egg yolk and cream mixture combined becomes the custard base. And when we cook those on, we're gonna steam them, that solidifies into that beautiful texture that we all know and love. So that's what we did for our pumpkin pot de cremes. And I promise you, this is like such a fun, different pumpkin dessert that you can serve for Thanksgiving. People will love it. So now what we're gonna do to cook these and I think we've still got, the rolls are getting close. Let's see, I think with rolls, they can be a little sensitive. I am gonna give these, oh, we're getting real close. I'm gonna give these a turn because remember we talked, that convection fan is on. All that heat is coming from the back. So I do like to rotate more delicate foods front to back, just like that. So I've got that, it probably needs only like five more minutes. So I'm gonna show you guys the steam in a moment. But with these, what we're gonna do is we are going to steam them. So you're gonna to go to the steam mode and you are going to drop the temperature about 20 degrees. So you want it at 190. Most steaming things, you can just leave it at 210. That is where steam lives. That is the steaming temperature. But with peau de cremes, they're a little bit more sensitive and we don't want to curdle them. If anyone's ever tried to cook creme brulee at home or a peau de creme, they are tricky. They can be very easy to mess up. Your steam oven is going to make everything so much easier. 
when you typically do something like this, a custard, you need to include a water bath or a bain-marie in underneath the custards. So you have a water bath that you set these inside. It can get a little dicey, a little messy. And if you pour the water while it's over here on the counter and try to move that to the oven, it's a serious, serious situation. So we here don't have to do that with the steam oven. They just go right, and I'm using my perforated pan. Don't know if you can tell, but it's the perforated pan. And then we've got the custards on. We're gonna drop that temperature, and that's all I have to do. We're gonna put them in. This size is gonna take about 20 minutes, but if you've got a bigger size, a deeper size, it might take up to 30 minutes. So that's what we're doing with these. I'm gonna hand these over to Yvonne. What you wanna look for is just a very slight jiggly wiggly when you move the pan, where you can tell they're set, but they're still nice and soft. So I'm gonna give these to Yvonne, and she's gonna go ahead and start those in one of our other steam ovens. Again, steam 190, and it takes about 20 minutes. These are four ounce ramekins that we have filled. And then when they're done, you, you need to set them in the fridge for at least four hours. So these are really ideal to do the day before, which again, great, one less thing to do on the day of Thanksgiving. You get these done, stick them in the fridge, they're ready to pull out, and we top them with a ginger snap streusel and uh, a nice light whipped cream. So that's how we're gonna serve our pumpkin pie this year, okay? All right, now, oh, beautiful. Still no questions, this is like the easiest class ever. Usually everyone has a million questions on the steam oven. Again, don't be scared to ask, you guys, okay? And I got, I'm just keeping a close eye on these rolls because I can smell them and they are like this close to being done. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Do you know what? Yeah, yes, please, thank you. I'm actually gonna pull these rolls out right now because I'm gonna show you two neat little tricks. So here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna pull the rolls out here. I'm gonna show you how we finish them. Oh, they're so gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, so I can go ahead and stop the auto steam bake process, pull these beauties out, show you guys how fun they end up looking. They're so cute. Oh, I wish the lighting was a little bit better. But in person, they look gorgeous and brown. And the way we're going to finish these off is a little nice Irish butter and some flaky salt. Now, before I start this, I'm showing you my trick because we're being really efficient with our time here. This is hot. We just finished baking our rolls at 350. Steam is not going to survive in a 350 degree environment. The steam mode has to be at 210 degrees or below, okay? So how do we get this now ready for steaming? This is a little trick. You're gonna go to that main home screen and you are going to go to the convection mode. From there, you're gonna go to the temperature. Great, yeah, we're gonna zoom so you guys can see. Can you see that? Okay, perfect. So we're on, let me start that back over because I want you guys to see what we're doing. And, okay, so home screen, door is open. We're gonna go to the convection mode, hit enter. Temperature, we are gonna drop down all the way to 90 degrees. We hit enter, and guess what's happening? That fan kicks on, and it just starts blowing out all of the hot air. So it's going to prepare our cavity for a steaming environment. I actually can see the temperature right here of the oven continually. It's at 284, already it's dropped that much. Oh, 277, like you can see how rapidly that's dropping. 270, we are gonna be at that perfect steaming temperature in no time. And while that's finishing getting there, I can show you how we finish our rolls. All right, so beautiful little rolls. I've got a very, very, very soft butter and I just like to brush them all over the top. Now, again, it just doesn't quite do it justice not being here in person, but you guys can trust me. It smells good, they look good. They look nothing like the frozen rolls that you're used to because we've used that steaming and the high heat giving us this like really beautiful end product. 
And the reason I like to butter them afterwards instead of before is because we have that um, steam kick in, we end up with that beautiful, even golden brown crust without the butter. But by doing it now, brushing it on, we get all the butter flavor way more intense than if you had put the butter on before. Like you get the butter at the end becomes this really nice, beautiful glaze almost. And the flavor is much, much better. So this is why I like to brush this butter on after they're cooked. This really works with the steam oven. If you were doing this in a regular oven, then I would say you want to butter it beforehand. But here we can do it after and they just are glowing. You guys, they're glowing. I literally can't wait for these. Okay, so I've brushed all over. They're all even. Honestly, this butter as it melts smells so yummy. Trey, great question. We have a question, yay! So yes, your convection steam oven has that convection fan, meaning it does have the ability to do multiple trays at the same time. In your big ovens, you can honestly do like three or four trays at the same time and they really come out even and beautiful. In the steam oven, it is a smaller cavity. It has four places that you can put racks, but you're not gonna get that same even cooking. And so in your steam oven, two trays, two racks are really the most you can get in terms of even cooking. I'm gonna like try to come bring these. Let's see if we can see. I want you guys to see the shiny and those little flaky salts on there. You guys just can see, right? You can see how good these look. They're shiny and golden brown, and we've got a nice little flaky salt on there. You can imagine. You guys can all run up here after and come eat rolls, okay? So I can set these aside now. Hmm, yes, let me get to you. They're not too hot. All right, and our oven is cooled down already to 145 degrees. So I'm gonna stop that, but I wanna make sure that um, I clarify what I was saying about the multiple trays. So you know the racks, you're all at home. Hopefully you can stand in front of your steam oven. We have one, two, three, four. Oh, nice. So one and two are really close together. I'm gonna show you what it would be like if we had one and two at the same time. There is about, mm, that's an inch. There's about an inch gap between them. This is not enough room to really get even cooking on both. Our rolls wouldn't even fit, obviously. So. The best way to do it is you can go on rack number three and two work well together. Like if you were doing two trays of cookies, they cook beautifully and evenly on two and three or one and three. So if you're trying to do two trays of those rolls because it's Thanksgiving and everyone loves rolls, you probably need two. I would put one tray on one and the other on three because those do, uh, they really rise a lot as you guys saw they need a little more space in between to make sure that those rolls don't hit the top. Oh, yes, cookie sheet, yes, 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 yes. I'm so glad this happened. Okay, so I'm gonna move this out of the way and we're gonna grab a cookie sheet. Thank you. All right, again, regular size cookie sheets. Remember how I said in between three and four, or in between two and one. So in between three and four, slides right in. It did not go in the three place or the four place, it's in between. Again, same thing with in between two and one. So you could do two trays at the same time of just regular cookie trays. Okay, that clear, we feel good about that. Now you guys can all see, yay. All right, guys. Yes, yes, we had a question about this. Okay, so we're pausing on steam for a moment so we can talk about this. This was the little roasting pan that we had our turkey in. Now, one second, hey Vaughn, I think we need to turn him to the other side. Don't do that one talking. Okay, um, I'll explain what Yvonne's doing in a second. Um, but we can talk about this. So this is what we had our turkey on. This fits in the oven and it's a great roasting pan, but it does not come with your oven. And this is not, the same one that comes with your big size ovens. I'm gonna pull that out just, actually, no, I'm not, there's too many. But the one that comes with your dual fuel range or your electric wall ovens is bigger than this and it does not fit in your steam oven. We 
where did we end up getting these? We, we found, so we had these, that's right. Okay, so this, we honestly don't know. We inherited this beautiful pan and we love it. But we looked everywhere, Wolf does not, we can't find this accessory piece. We don't know if it was really old or what, but we have found a very similar, does the same thing from, on Amazon. And what, what brand was it? You got it here. I'll send them the link. Okay, Yvonne will send the link with where we found the roasting, pan, roasting pans that you can use in your sea mold. So it does obviously need to be smaller. And this material just ensures that um, it's a little bit deeper so it holds any juices left over like our turkey has, is gonna have a little more juices. And so if you have a sheet pan, it might overflow, which we don't want. And on top of that, anyone who has used their steam oven on, you know, good, okay. <laughs> um, anyone who's used their steam oven like roasting something on high, you might notice that the trays that come with your steam oven, they kind of warp when they get really hot. So that warping is totally normal. These are full on stainless steel pans, true stainless steel pans. And because of that, the high heat, the metal kind of gets funky and it warps. And then as it cools down, the pan also flattens out again. There's nothing wrong with that. People are always like, my pans are broken. I promise they're not. Let them cool down again. They go back to flat and straight. This pan will hold its shape a little bit more than enameled, um, I don't even know what material this is. We can find out, but it's enameled. It's not stainless steel, so it does not work like a stainless steel pan, okay? So that's what this pan is. Hopefully that answers the question. Again, when we send our recipes and our tips and tricks, we will also send um, a link for this, this little roasting pan or a similar roasting pan, okay? <laughs> Do you need this or am I putting this away? <laughs> Very carefully. So I'm going to talk about this because the steam oven, typically you really, it does cook evenly. You don't need to rotate things the way I have a lot, but you guys see the size of this turkey. It's taking up most of the cavity in the oven. We're using convection heat. That means the heating element is directly in front of the fan. So it's blowing out from the back. Now you can imagine that the side of the turkey that was facing the fan is gonna get a lot more of that direct heat. So when I'm doing something like this, you need to turn it so that the other side gets that same blast of hot air. So what she did, she really very carefully, and you guys saw it, because the probe wasn't in the set in the thigh, or the drumstick or wherever, it wasn't in the leg, the probe was in the breast, so it's on top. So that is possible to turn it because it's not like under the turkey where it's like getting twisted around. So you can, you just turn it very carefully. And um, yeah, just be careful. <laughs> that might not be worth it in your home. If you don't care, I really want it to come out looking really pretty for you guys. So I am taking that extra step. You don't have to do that. It's gonna taste great. You will still get browning. It just won't be as even. So if you're scared of that, just don't come after me, okay? <laughs> That's just me being crazy. So that is, that what just happened. Again, she was careful. You can rest the turkey on the door because this can handle up to like 90 pounds. So you can rest the turkey there if you need to turn it and then put it back in. Hopefully that answers that question. It's, I mean, I wish you guys were all here because it's live action, it's kind of crazy. Things get wild during classes. All right, so that's turkey, that's pans. I think we've answered all those questions so far and we can now talk about that steam mode. Now remember, we steamed our pot of cremes, and what I'm gonna do, um, I'm going to show you what we did, but I'm gonna steam something else, okay? So, many of the, my family, mashed potatoes is the favorite part of Thanksgiving. So, we have to make sure we have good mashed potatoes. We are actually going to steam our potatoes for mashing, okay? So, Yukon Golds, I think they come up with a better texture and flavor than the rest of the potatoes, which are better for baked potatoes. But I like to use Yukon Gold potatoes. We do peel them because you know you need more of a smooth consistency. And we've cut them into little chunks, like one inch chunks. 
Okay, going in the steam oven. And now I'm showing you another little trick of the trade. I'm going to put the solid pan underneath that perforated pan. That's going to catch all of the juices, starchy juices that are released from the potatoes as they steam. So if you're ever using that perforated pan and you don't want all those juices to fall onto the bottom of the oven, you can use the solid pan. And then we're just going to wash that afterwards. Okay. Now the potatoes don't make too much of a mess, but I still wanted to show you guys this little neat trick. Okay. So potatoes are in. Now, Ab, let's zoom in so I can show them the steaming. And I'm gonna show you how I did the creme brulees, the pot cremes I mean, and then I'll do the potatoes. But if you were pretending our creme brulees, our pot cremes were in here, can't say it right, you're gonna hit steam, and then again, use the rack positions, yada, yada, hit enter. Temperature here, you would drop down to 190 degrees because that is the perfect temperature for Custards, more delicate foods like a custard. Okay, you'd hit enter and then you would hit the duration. I do set a timer here and I would set it for 20 minutes. Enter. So that's the duration and then our protocrums would be good to go. Okay, so I'm now going to stop playing pretend and now we're doing our potatoes. When you're steaming vegetables, guess what? You just come to that steam oven or that steam mode and you can do it at 210 because that is a true steaming temperature. So I'm not going to, you know, it's set at 20 minutes. We'll let that happen because these probably will take about 20 minutes. And then if they're not done, it's no problem. You want to test them with a fork. Just kind of stab it to make sure they're all the way tender. There's no resistance of the potato. And then they'll be ready to mash into delicious mashed potatoes. Okay. So those are in. If they need longer, again, like I said, just open the oven carefully. Don't let the steam hit you in the face. You're gonna kind of like pierce it with a paring knife or a fork, no resistance, then they're ready to be pulled out. And then you can continue on your mashed potato way. The reason I like to use the steam mode for my mashed potatoes is because the less waterlogged they are, the fluffier your mashed potatoes will be and the better flavor. When you boil your potatoes, those potatoes are really going to absorb a lot of that water and wetter mashed potatoes tend to be a lot heavier and denser and they're going to have less flavor because you've got more water in there. So by steaming our potatoes, you end up with a fluffier end product and a better end product overall. Lucky for you guys, we have some potatoes already done. And this is another really cool trick that I wanted to show you guys. So I've got my mashed potatoes. You can see they've fully cooled into a nice mass. And what I've done here is, instead of our regular mashed potatoes, which are still delicious in their own way, but we have a very different style of mashed potato. These are a lemon thyme mashed potato. So we make a compound butter with a ton of lemon zest, a bunch of thyme, salt, and then we have that compound butter mixture. And after our potatoes have cooked, we mash them all up with that butter. If you want smooth and creamy, dreamy, amazing mashed potatoes, you need to get a uh, ricer, a potato ricer. It literally gives you that, the smoothest texture possible. You can rice your potatoes and throw the butter in there, mix them together. If you like a chunkier mashed potato, just use a regular masher. But you do not want to go crazy with like a blender or a stand mixer or a hand mixer. Because if you overwork your potatoes, they become gummy. Starches continually come out and they start to form more of a mass instead of a fluffy light texture, you get like literally a gummy mashed potato. So you don't want to overmix them and you don't want to undermix them. So that's why a potato ricer is the best way to do it or a hand masher, okay? That's how you're gonna do your mashed potatoes. Mix that with the butter and then we add a warmed milk that we just kind of warm it up on the stove because you don't wanna add anything cold or your potatoes will seize up a little bit and they won't be again as beautifully mixed and fluffy. So we add the warmed milk, mix that together, salt, black pepper, and that is how we do mashed potatoes here. So now, now for anyone out there, I would ask, but again, we're on a Zoom call, so you might not answer. If anyone has ever tried to do mashed potatoes in advance, you really can't. Reheating mashed potatoes is quite a challenge. 
and difficult to do because they will get gummy or they will get dry and they're just never as good as they are fresh. So usually mashed potatoes are like the last thing you do. The mashed potatoes and the rolls are the last two things that are finished. In this case, you have a steam oven and you can actually prepare in advance. So you can reheat your mashed potatoes beautifully, stress-free in your steam oven. So we've got our mashed potatoes all done. You could do these the day before. Again, get these done and then cover them up, keep them in your fridge. And then we're gonna put this whole mixture, our mashed potato mixture in the steam oven and we're gonna select the reheat mode. So you guys don't have to wait for these potatoes to be fully done and steamed. We can just stick these in the reheat and it will take, since we've got a whole pan of mashed potatoes, um, this can take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. If they come straight from the fridge, they'll take longer. If they've been sitting out and they're more at room temperature, they'll take a little less time. Depending how much potatoes you have, depending how deep your dish is, um, and what temperature they go in, obviously you're going to have different times for reheating. We are gonna go ahead and set this in a different steam oven on reheat. And what the reheat comes up at is 250 degrees, and that is the in my opinion, the best temperature for reheating. So I rarely change that temperature. So we'll reheat those 250 degrees and those will probably only take 15 minutes because they are more at room temperature and we've got it in a 13 by nine dish. So it's a little more, you could see it's a flat surface and it's less thick. It's only like, you know, a layer of mashed potatoes this thick. So they will reheat faster, 10 to 15 minutes. Now, in terms of that reheat, if you were, wondering how you use the reheat in your daily life, that is the perfect way to reheat a single plate of food. Instead of a microwave, you can reheat here. My husband is a pro at it, actually. Like the one area in the kitchen that he really, really shines at is reheating his food in the steam oven. So you take a plate, just a regular plate of food, put all the different items. Like yesterday we had rice and black beans that I'd made on Sunday. And uh, we had, oh yeah, I had to, roast another turkey yesterday, so we had turkey with it. So my sister came over later to enjoy some of the extras, and he put it all on a plate, stuck it in the steam oven, and we like to do it on one of the racks. So the plate goes right on the rack, and it's at 250 degrees, and we just start it. It takes, again, depending on what food, how dense that food is, how cold that food is, anywhere from four to 10 minutes for a single plate of food. So it's actually quite quick and it actually reheats the food. So it's delicious. Oftentimes better, those beans reheated in the steam oven, totally better than the, well, everyone guys got a little echo. We're good. Okay. Um, those beans were so much better reheated the next day or two days. Yesterday was Tuesday. Reheated in the steam oven because the flavors had had time to really get together, but they were not dried out and or overcooked, or we hadn't lost any of the goodness. Oh, we gotta refill water by a microwave. Okay, steam oven, the container ran out of water. We're stopping, because you can see it starts beeping at you, pops open. Guess what, my potatoes in there, I'm not worried at all. The steam that's in the cavity is gonna stay in there. The temperature is gonna stay. I'm just refilling this water at our sink. And now it will just continue on like nothing ever happened. Really, really nice thing about the Wolf steam oven is that water container is on the outside. So we don't have to open the oven to pull out a water container and we don't lose anything while it's cooking. Okay. So that's what just happened there. I just had to turn the light on that turkey because he is looking gorgeous. He needs about 10 more degrees, 20 more degrees than we can pull him out. Okay. Um, okay. So, Steam oven, water cavity, no problem. What were we just talking about? Reheating, we were talking about reheating. So yes, we put the plate in, regular, we keep it at 250, it does a great job. Um, if you have bigger things like a full casserole dish of mashed potatoes, it's gonna take longer. As you can imagine, the bigger something is, the colder it is, the longer it takes. But everything reheated in that steam oven is so much better than if you tried to microwave it or even tried to reheat it in the oven. Like we can reheat eggs, which is so hard to do because eggs get eggy, you know, in like a bad way if you try to reheat them. We make frittatas, stick them in the fridge or freezer if we wanted to have frittatas for like months. We pull the whole thing out, it goes in the steam oven and it reheats 
beautifully, gently without any overcooking or textural change. So it does a really, really good job of reheating. Do we have any questions on reheat? Wow, I've gone a full hour, straight talking, no water. So thirsty. Okay, so that's the reheat. I did just realize that I wanted to go back to the steam function because I didn't finish talking about what you can do on the steam mode. Steaming, we did talk about steaming potatoes. So yes, you can steam vegetables and we talked about potocrems. So you can steam custards. So you other, I wanna give you a lot of other fun examples of what that steam mode can do because it is incredible. My favorite food, rice, which I have often, I just cook it in my steam oven and it's fabulous. Like cooking a good pot of rice is difficult and it does such a good job in the steam oven, it's perfect. I can honestly say every single time. I like a long grain white rice, like a jasmine rice is my go-to. Uh, basmati is really good as well. But I will take the rice for every one cup of rice, you will add one and a quarter cups liquid. You will also add, you know, some salt, about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half per cup of rice. I like to do it in a, again, a more shallow dish, like a 13 by nine or an eight by eight, depending how much rice you have. If you have three cups of rice, like on Sunday, I did four cups of rice. I had 12 people over, we ate all the rice, and I do it in a 13 by nine dish. So I added, in that case, four cups of rice, and I add five cups of water, one and a quarter cup for every one cup of rice. Added a bunch of salt, and then it just goes straight in the steam oven, and then you hit steam, again at 210, so the regular steaming temperature, for 30 minutes, and it is Perfect. Every single rice grain is fluffy. It is individual. It's not gummy. It's not undercooked or overcooked. It's perfect. So I do rice literally three to four times a week. I'm obsessed. Okay. So it does rice grains. It also will do soft and hard boiled eggs beautifully. So you just take your whole Costco carton of eggs. And I mean the whole thing. Take the cardboard even. So let's just say you've got a full, full tray of eggs. Stick this whole thing, cardboard and all, directly in the steam oven, and you will steam them for 20 minutes for perfect hard-boiled eggs. And yes, this many, and yes, in the cardboard, it works, it's amazing. So your Easter is like a breeze. This is 30 eggs, done like this, no cracked shells, no boiling water, over boiling, none of that. You just stick this whole thing in, hit steam, 20 minutes, perfect hard-boiled eggs. For a perfect soft-boiled egg, you're gonna do 11 minutes. I love soft boiled egg, so that's important. Um, it's important also for me to tell you, all of this, everything I've said for steam mode is unpreheated oven. You are not going to preheat the oven. You wanna use that steaming coming out to your advantage. You don't need to preheat, just stick them in and they will do their thing, okay? They also, by the way, those eggs peel way easier. So again, now we've kind of talked about a few other things. Other things you can do on the steam, you can steam any of the vegetables you like in your life, like potatoes, like hair covert, green beans, asparagus. Um, there's not a lot of vegetables I like steamed. Sweet potatoes are fabulous. You can poach your fish for a nice shrimp cocktail right in the steam oven, super easy. Takes like 10, 11 minutes, depending how big or small your shrimp are, it might be way less. Um, you can poach beautiful halibut or salmon fillets. You can thaw beautifully in the steam mode with the temperature all the way down to 90. You can do so many things. That steam mode is truly, truly incredible. And I use it for a lot, okay? So I wanted to make sure that I really iterated all the things that steam can do. All right, so that is our main modes. I am going to, let's see, make sure we have talked about everything in regards to cooking. Any other questions? If not, then I can start talking about the cleaning and taking care of. Okay, again, if you come up with any questions or I a lot of times have people asking, if you have Thanksgiving questions or steam oven questions, let us know. If not, no worries. I'm gonna show you now in terms of taking care of and cleaning, okay? So let me grab, I've got, oh, it's right here. She had, I walked right by it. 
So, yes, we got a question. Oh my gosh, absolutely. So glad you said that. Reheat mode. Let me actually, yes. Hard, stale bread. You are going to just put it right in your steam oven on the rack. Because you, if you put bread on a plate, it'll get soggy. So you put the bread in on a rack, reheat, and that's it. Hit enter. That reheat at 250, and the bread will just come back to life. Now, speaking of bread, stale bread, I also, besides rice, I love sourdough. I love toast so much, like really, really buttery toast. And about four or five days a week, I have soft scrambled eggs with toast for breakfast. I like love. What I like to do is I buy really good sourdough bread from either Harmon's or there's this other bakery that we're obsessed with here. And I will use two slices of bread and then I'll slice up the rest of that loaf and stick it in the freezer. Then throughout the week, I will pull one or two slices out of the freezer, however many I need, and I will put them in my steam oven on the reheat mode. And I will, thought that bread will then completely come back to life. Like it truly is fluffier and better than when I first had it. It's remarkable. I'll pull that out. Sometimes I just eat it the way it is. Sometimes I will toast it. But that is what you can do with that steam oven. You can, if you want to get on the bread train like I am, like I love toast, you can do that. Keep it in your freezer, pull it out, stick it in your steam oven to refresh and come back to life. It takes like two or three minutes for a slice. Or if you leave a whole loaf on the counter, it just gets stale. You can bring that back to life as well. Same process, reheat. It'll just take a bit longer if you've got the whole loaf. If you've got slices, it's fast. But so glad you brought that up. Great question. Awesome. Any other? I think we're good on that. Hopefully that was all very clear. It's very easy. Okay, great. I keep checking on my turkey here. Now we've got 10 more degrees to go, so we're very, very close. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about cleaning. I've got a couple minutes to go through the care portion of the steam oven. So you guys saw, I, I like to start with the cleaning of the interior of the oven. It's all stainless steel, you guys saw it. It's actually like our easiest oven to clean and take care of, even though it is our most highly used oven. Because it's stainless steel, it's actually safe to use our easy off. This is a fairly strong chemical. We would not recommend to use this in our regular ovens, but in your steam oven, because it's stainless steel, it is totally safe and it is gonna make your life so much easier, okay? So when we've done something pretty intense, like roast a turkey, and we're roasting a turkey at a higher temperature, so you're gonna get splatter. That turkey skin is full of turkey fat, and at a high temperature, that fat kind of splatters all over the oven and it kind of bakes on, and it looks scary. And you're like, how am I gonna clean this? The next day, Spray the inside of the oven with Easy Off all over, and you'll end up with a, well, then you're going to leave, let it sit for like four hours at least. Oftentimes, we'll just leave it on for like a full day, and then you come back and you wipe it off, and everything just wipes off beautifully. That's when you need to do like an intense clean. If you are just like steaming potatoes, and you need to kind of wipe it out, we use water and vinegar and a microfiber cloth and everything kind of just comes off. Because it's a steam oven, it's inherently self-cleaning a lot of the time, so you don't really need to do a deep clean when you've done you know, most of the things you've done. It's only when you do something like roast turkey, roast chicken, bacon, something that is cooking at high heat and is gonna splatter everywhere, that's when you're gonna need to do a deep clean. In general, run a steam mode, empty oven, steam it, and wipe it out, and that'll help clean anything out. Use water and vinegar and a microfiber cloth, or if you need like a little spot clean, we love to use our barkeeper's friend. And this is the liquid um, version. So it's more of like a paste. It's not the dry powder. We'll use this and we'll kind of use a non-scratch scrubby to get off any little spots. So that's how we like to do this. Now, that's the interior of the oven. I know we have potatoes in here, but we have to pause this oven because I want to show you guys a tip that's important for cleaning the racks and actually cleaning the whole oven. So I'm gonna pull this out. You can give yourself a nice little facial right there, okay? So we're gonna pull these out. Let's just see if they're tender, if they need longer. Oh yeah, those will need longer, we'll finish them a little bit later. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out so I can show you guys a little trick. I'm gonna put those right there. Okay, so, oh, I should have just done that here. Good. I mean, I'll just set these inside so they don't. Thank you. Um, okay, we can go finish steaming those actually in another oven if you want. Um, again, I wanted to show you guys, this is important. So, the side racks. That makes it really hard to clean the oven. Well, uh, yes, Abby's gonna zoom in so you can see. I'm trying to decide which one I wanna do it on. Is that this one? Yes, okay. It's kinda hot, so I'm using a, a cloth that if your oven's not hot, you can just do this with your fingers. But there is a little knob, and it's right here in the front side of the oven, and on this side as well. And you just need to turn that lefty-loosey, okay? So I'm just turning, turning, turning. comes off and now the racks on the side just pop right out. So now we have a smooth surface that we can easily wipe down if there's any gunk on the side. And these racks, if these got dirty, you can put these into a big paper bag, a paper bag, a big plastic bag, like a garbage bag. And you can spray the easy off all over those, close up the bag, and then leave those at least four hours and these will clean off super easy as well. So that's how, and now we've got, clean this off, these can get cleaned, and then when you're ready to put them back in, there's two um, little, what would you say, sticky outies you guys can see right there? Those go in, you can see the holes in the back of the oven, so you just stick those in, and then this rests right back on the knob. And now you take that little screw and you go righty, whoops, a little hot, and you're just gonna go righty tidy. Okay, turn it, and that's how easy the racks come out and clean. Okay, that was important. So, that's how we generally clean our ovens and the racks. When we clean our probe, this is also important, we just wash it with hot, soapy water. We do not want to put those in the dishwasher. Those, if you put those in the dishwasher, they can stop working effectively. So, you just wanna make sure that you hand wash them, dry them. Easy peasy, okay? Now, we are literally there. Okay, we're gonna, I'm like putting the light on here. We're about ready to pull our turkey out. This is the moment, okay? If we have any questions on cleaning, before I continue. Oh, before that comes out, I did one other thing. I know it's gonna beep any second, but there is a descaling process that you will need to do with your oven. There it is, beeping at me. Okay, I'm gonna stop this off. Okay, great, we're gonna let that go just for a second so I can finish, just let it sit in there, okay? So to descale your appliance, what that means is, and the oven will tell you if it needs to be descaled, thank you very much. What that means is the water container, this little cavity, we do have hard water here in Utah, so those minerals will deposit on the sides. You'll see like a white film. If it needs to be descaled, your oven will say descale appliance. You can buy the descaling unit here in our showroom if you wanna come hang out with us and say hi, or you can just get it online or get it on Sub-Zero Wolf's website. So you're gonna buy this descaling unit, and then you will go to the settings, and you'll go to, you'll use the arrows to get to descale, and it will walk you through the whole process. It is so easy. You're basically gonna take the water container out, pour this whole descaling solution into the water container, and then stick it back in the oven, and it goes through a descale process, and then it tells you to pull it out, dump the descaling solution, add water, and do a couple rinse cycles. So that is how easy it is to descale. And again, don't stress, the oven will tell you when it's time to descale. So, don't be like, it's, I've had this for a year, I haven't had to descale. You might have softer water, or you might use your steam oven less, okay? I would say it's typically around six months for people needing to descale, but I've had people call four years after they've gotten their steam oven. So it does tell you. And then my last tip on that descaling, and I am gonna like get ready to pull this out. My last tip on the descaling is if it tells you you need to descale on Thanksgiving day and you panic, don't worry, your oven will still work. Just kind of say, okay, enter, and skip the descaling until you can come in the next day 
and get the solution and do the descale process. It's no stress. You don't have to descale it the second it says it'll still work, but you want to do it fairly soon. If it's on Thanksgiving Day, go ahead, use it like normal, and then descale it later. Okay? So that is the cleaning. Now I feel confident that I can move these aside and I can pull our turkey out. This is the moment, okay? I hope everyone's paying attention because this is truly what Thanksgiving is all about right here. Look at our golden brown, beautiful bird. It smells seriously fantastic. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna pull this out and stick it on the counter, okay. And then with this, when you're pulling this out, yes, it's a little bit tricky. Same idea, we don't wanna spill the juices. So I'm just gonna put it here. Don't burn yourself, don't burn yourself. I'll just, I pull out the probe with the hot pad, okay? Let it sit right there. Look at our turkey. You know what, I'm gonna put it right here. Can you guys see this baby? Look at that. And now it is evenly golden brown, all sides. It looks and smells fantastic. Can you guys see that? That is crispy skin, I'm so excited, okay? That is our turkey. Now that we have cooked it, it has to sit for at least 45 minutes. I usually let my turkey sit an hour so that this white meat will come up to temperature. We want it at 165. As it sits, it rises 10 degrees. And so you're gonna get a perfectly cooked interior. I'm saying that because I know some of you out there were like 155 degrees, that's like still raw. It's not. And now it will get up to that perfect 165 degrees as long as you let it rest again, at least 45 minutes for an 18 pound turkey. You need those juices to like kind of come back together. You need it to finish up and then we will carve it and it will be time to eat. But what I'm gonna do right now, we're gonna do a little fun, I'm gonna pull out the probe. I'm trying to decide how I'm gonna get this onto the plate. Hold, this is gonna be a moment. Should I just pick it up with my hands? Okay guys, this is for all the people out there. Turkey, got him. Oh yeah, <gasps> it worked. Okay, so we've got our turkey on our platter. If you wanted to have fun with it, like we're doing right now, we are, you can put the whole thing on a platter because it looks so beautiful and it's fun to serve something like that for Thanksgiving to your family and your friends or, I mean, I don't know how we're all doing it this year. It's a little bit different, but this way you can show what your steam oven can do and what, no, you can show what you can do and how amazing you are. Okay, so now what we have for you guys, um, I think that, did I wanna show them, oh, the pot cremes, did those come out? I wanted to show everyone how the pot cremes end up. So hold, please. And Abby, we're still good on questions? Okay, awesome. I've got to show how these turned out. They look perfect. Um, maybe I'll put a little streusel on it. I'm gonna do a finished product for that pot creme but I am, I'm like awkwardly, look, so now I can turn it. You can see that it's shiny, it's beautiful. It's nicely cooked. And so these are gonna need to sit in the fridge for just a little while. But what you'll do to finish it off, we're gonna add, you're gonna add this beautiful streusel product, okay? Right there to the side. This looks lovely. And then we've got a little bit of cream so this is what you can end up with okay i'm gonna show you a beautiful pumpkin pot of creme so this is look at that ginger snap streusel a little whipped cream a little pumpkin pot of creme and that is going to be your dessert all right you guys now we have a little surprise for you okay it's time Let me tell her. Okay, you guys. Again, I, look, no questions. Okay, we're gonna show you Thanksgiving at the Roth showroom. We wish you could be here with us, but look what we've got for you guys. This is Thanksgiving, okay? We've got the stuffing, the we've got our cranberry sauce, our turkey, look at our beautiful rolls, our gravy, and our beautiful Brussels sprouts and our reheated mashed potatoes. Look at that, guys. That is Thanksgiving for you. We wish you were here to eat it with us. Don't worry. 
none of this food will go to waste. We have big appetites here and we will eat it all. All right, guys, I'm checking now. I'm gonna see if we have any other questions. But I think we're all good. Everyone's good. We hope you had a good time. We hope you learned what you needed to and that you guys are ready to enjoy your steam oven. Feel free to call us if you have any other questions or concerns before or after, well, before Thanksgiving, okay? Call us, we're here for you. Thanks for joining in and we will talk to you guys later. Happy Thanksgiving.